Hey guys, so uh, today I'm going off to yet another adventure. Now, I've been promised uh, a lot of things in the past, and uh, most of them didn't come to fruition. So this is uh, could be one of them, we'll see. Uh, they said that this area is known for lots and lots of alligators. So far I've only seen two, uh, just kind of swimming off in the back over there. So uh, this trip is going to be a long one. I didn't bring enough water with me, primarily because today is kind of a uh, overcast and kind of eh, not too bad. Um, you know, I still have three bottles. Normally, I carry six, uh, but today just doesn't feel like it's going to be a really hot day. So uh, it looks like there's a couple of people here, um, which is no biggie. Doesn't make any difference to me. I'll be using my trolling motor. You know, I found uh, something really interesting. Um, that little solar panel thing. It's useless. It is absolutely useless to charge a marine battery. Oh my gosh. Uh, in full peak sun, it was pulling 300 more at most. And so, what that means is, if you need to charge a typical, you know, uh, marine battery, it will take you forever and so I left it running for like a week just to see how much it would actually charge and it went from 12.4 volts to like 12 point maybe mm, like 6 at most um, I'm like okay that, that that's just not gonna cut it so I connected my um, uh, charger and so uh, I found that to be a little bit more effective now I did uh, charge on a slow charge at 2 amp uh, there is an option to do it at 6 amps, but I, I just, you know, you get a better charge out of it by charging it slowly, if you know what I mean. So, uh, this area is ginormous. Effectively, uh, way down over there. I uh, need to make a right turn, but because I'm using a trolling motor, I'll be able to actually um, get there a lot faster. I figure it's going to be like a six mile uh, trip, so weather permitting of course, it's supposed to rain at one o'clock, um, so we'll see. Well, I don't want to seem like a Debbie Downer, but um, yes, so so far I haven't seen a single alligator other than from the bank, so this place is not living up to its name. Um, that being said, um, it is extremely difficult to navigate through this. Now, I am swimming in the uh, center of the channel, which uh, to those of you with eagle eyes might find that extremely odd because normally I hug the coastline. Well, the reason why I'm keeping a center line is because there's so much underwater vegetation here. It is almost pathetic. A extremely difficult to navigate uh, through and through uh, it goes from like 16 feet deep to like 0 feet 16 feet to 0 feet and the reason why is despite the fact that actually it is 16 feet up here it um oh hey there's an alligator well, I guess that would be a, a first one straight ahead over there um, it, it makes this whole thing almost impassable very unfortunate because I'm looking at my fish finder and you know the bottom is clear and then all of a sudden you get you know nothing but grass uh, or whatever, whatever that vegetation is uh, thankfully you know in places like this you can actually see where the vegetation is but in all other places like it could be just like you see straight ahead and all of a sudden it goes to nothing But, uh, whoa! And there we go. Just like that. Man. <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's pathetic. Come on. You could do it. You could do it. 
Unbelievable. Wow. Come on. Let me see if I could. Crazy, crazy. And the problem with that is, um, well, you were just seen it live, essentially. Oh, and it just went back to 16 feet again. So, it gets caught in the props, okay? And I, I just don't have the energy in me to constantly take this whole thing in and out, in and out. So, I'll be trying to... Crazy, crazy. Um, but yes, the, the goal today is to navigate the six mile uh, truck. Uh, originally, I wanted to hug the coastline. From the looks of it, that is not going to happen. So that might turn into a much shorter ride. Well, my fish finder doesn't know what to do with itself. It is just absolutely atrocious that is just well, I have to say that for being one of the most anticipated things I wanted to go oh there's a person in there He is suffering the same kind of fate that I am. The lake, I mean, ecologically, yeah, of course it's diverse. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff up here to look at, like this osprey that's flying by. Um, but the fact of the matter is, and you could actually see what he is doing. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. Um, it goes... Oh, it just went to 20 feet. I had to fight for like half a mile of a absolutely atrocious... I think it's called hydrilla uh, weeds. It's just absolutely deplorable. It kind of spoils, I mean, like, I, I, you know, if the rest of this trip is good, it would have been spoiled by just inability to get here. Um, very unfortunate, uh, because this place is really, really beautiful, really pretty. Lots of birds and, um, you know, vegetation and everything like that. It's just the fact that if it's going to, I sincerely hope that it's going to stay deep. Because I, I just can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to sound like a complainer, but. In any event. Uh, the water is murky. Um, which is. I can't even believe that I'm going to say it. Uh, it's actually a good thing. It means. Um, it's not being cleared by all the weeds. Which means that there's no weeds here. So, half of my life fighting it, and... See, this guy's going wide, so maybe there's like a secondary passage in there that I don't know about. But he's gunning it, like he, he has his uh, motor mostly out of the water. Creating a rooster tail behind him. So, in any event, uh, the legend of this place is that um, it's called Gator Pit, and um, allegedly there's tons of alligators. Uh, so far, I've only seen maybe three, maybe four. And those are probably the same ones that I've seen initially.
Wow, this is really pretty. Um, you can see how I'm trying to look where I'm going. Hold the weeds, but you can see how reclamation efforts from 20, 30 years ago have come to fruition. Um, all this area is now uh, planted with forested wetlands on the periphery. Oh, here we go again. Clear water and a bunch of the sweet stuff. There it is. Like you, you, I, I hope the camera is picking this up. This is what I'm fighting. It's everywhere. Like I'm talking about everywhere. Now, let's see if we can clear the engine. Sometimes what helps me is getting it into like a reverse gear to clear. to clear it. But the problem is there's weeds everywhere. Like everywhere. Just absolutely everywhere. I'm in the middle of the lake. Come on. You know, this place would be perfect for somebody with an airboat, but the way the club rules are, um, you're not allowed to have an airboat in here. So I'm not sure what the uh, philosophy was behind this area. The only way to get here is with a boat, and you can't get your boat through here because of all the weeds. It is beautiful though. That's a cypress over there. A bunch of cypresses planted. Um, forested wetlands, uh, they're kind of a, and you know, I'm not like an ecologist type, but um, forested wetlands uh, do like water, but they don't like too much water, so there's this careful balance of uh, how deep they have to be and I think that's the reason why they've taken this lake and lowered it to what it is now in elevation specifically not to drown the trees um, seasonally they can tolerate being submerged for a prolonged amount of time um, but not in perpetuity so uh, you can actually see the those trees but across the road the uh, the waterway over there let me see if I can zoom in Whoa. Come on. okay there we go you, you can sort of see it in that uh, cypress over there that's how high the water could get here This lake is a little bit better, um, navigation-wise, but still, it's I'm, I'm looking down. You know, the water is clear, and I can see all the weeds and everything like that. Um, times like this, I uh, remember a lot of the uh, Asian movies. I know I'm going off an intention here, but. Uh, Philosophical tension. Uh, let me see if I can get closer. Um, in a lot of Asian movies, you could see those little uh, canoes they have with like an outboard motor on a like a really long stick, and that's actually the reason why they have that because they could um, roost the tail their way through all the weeds and everything like that. So, um, I don't know, I, I, I mean, obviously it's, it's good that I have a trolling motor, 
but to some extent I wish it was possible to get it out of the water on the whim. Really cool. You can see how um, the cypress up here is just thriving. Look at it. Look how fat it is. Uh, you know, give it another 50 years or so and it's going to be a massive, massive tree. Absolutely massive. And there's a Mr. Osprey. Off he goes. If you start seeing birds of prey, it means the water quality is good because they are one of the apex predators up here. Which is a good, good sign for them. Uh, conditions have actually improved. I'm looking at my uh, bottom. It's like 18 feet and the water is really dark So this lake is Deeper by a substantial margin So I figure I may have a little bit more success here uh, that being said um, You know if you look at all the clouds and everything like that Wind is blowing right from there and it's pushing all this nasty nasty this way they said, if you look here, right over there, the sky is blue. So all this nasty stuff is actually being pushed here. Uh, so I was supposed to get a uh, one o'clock thunderstorm, which will turn into more of a likely thunderstorm for the rest of the weekend, kind of thing, um, which is what I was hoping to do this thing, uh, but, well, a little known, I suppose, uh, the thing about going out on the water is you never know how it's going to go, so making any sort of plans, uh, I don't know, it's difficult, uh, because, like for example, I did not anticipate having to fight for half a mile of that crap. And I did not anticipate having all, like, all that crap. See how far I'm having to, you know, venture? The, the stuff that's sticking out, that's the stuff that's sticking out. But it's little baby brothers and sisters are nearby probably all the way up to here. So it could go from 20 feet down to zero in no time. So if Florida lives up to its name, uh, if you wait five minutes, uh, the weather will change. And as you see, uh, it is windy, 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 like you wouldn't believe it. But if you notice, there's a lot more clear sky. Over me. And um, the reason why is because the wind has changed and started pushing all that crap that I told you about off the away from here so actually I'm going into the wind right now and uh, it clears up uh, on the other side of those trees uh, which probably the camera probably can't see uh, it is clearing up so that's good it means I'll get a little bit more uh, kayaking weather um, oh hey we got a baby uh, blue heron This is just perfect for them. Oh, yeah, there he is. Um, this is just perfect for them, the habitat. They get the trees and they get the fish and the shallows, especially the shallows. Areas like this are prime habitat for snakes, like water snakes. And that's why you start hearing uh, herons, because they like the snakes. Cypresses are really taking. Mm. 
and just like that the weather has cleared up completely look at it how weird is that <laughs> I mean th this is just crazy you know one like literally 10 minutes ago it looked like I was gonna get rained on it's really both a blessing and a curse um, living in Florida because it's such a narrow state the weather kind of comes and goes um, the downside is we perpetually get hurricane force winds uh, regularly uh, pushing all the weather systems to and from uh, certainly living this close to the coast there's a lot to do with it but really pretty And of course the biodiversity of uh, things that you see, absolutely worth it. This is almost picture-perfect opportunity to show you guys. Uh, off in the back that you see over there, we have the moon and the pretty trees and the blue sky with, you know, slight clouds. And if you look really careful, it almost looks like there's a rainbow between the trees, the sky, and kind of have to squint a little bit. It's really pretty. And just the, the color assortment of multiple species of trees with the blue sky to the backdrop of the moon. Really cool. In the back there, you can see the photos. We're giving them plenty of space, don't want to disturb men in their element. Um, but you can see how uh, they're being bounced around by the wind. And they have a similar trolling motor to one I have. Except mine is pushing substantially less weight. actually see it in the lake it's kind of a, like you know so I'm gonna have to go all the way around it I think I may have figured out why it's so much more difficult for me to navigate with all the wind, uh, it's, if you see the ripples on the screen, it is making looking through water that much more difficult, uh, even with like, polarized sunglasses. 
it just throws your eyes off the uh, off the target if you know what I'm saying. Once again I got stuck. Gosh, this is just hilarious. And that's the thing, you know, when you have a trolling motor inside your, or rather under your hobby, uh, you have no idea what's there. Uh, the only thing you could do is just look at the speed. And my speed has dropped from, you know, it's normalcy to virtually nothing. So I kicked it into reverse gear, and next thing you know, this whole clump comes out. Now we should be entering territory, which I like to call a uh, perfect potential habitat for anything that looks like a, a heron. They absolutely adore areas like this as always if you see behind me uh, shallows everywhere so the, it's something that they would love that's for sure they could almost come on Could do it man just like that we're stuck all right let's try that again you know it is just crazy absolutely crazy you look at the water and there's just no indication behind me that there's, you know, impassable jungle crap. Ooh, in any event. Now that we'll spend the last 15 minutes trying to get out of there. There's a Mr. Heron. Mr. Egret was actually sitting here. And then he started laughing at me. Uh, eventually mows it over to that far side um, the downside to wild egrets you know the ones that you like you don't see in typical state parks or something like that is they're very skittish there he is So more than likely, uh, once we get to within like a hundred foot of him, he'll take off and skitter out of there. It's like a little cove. They like places like that because it's not so windy as you can see by the water. And other birds seem to like it too. And he's actually standing on that uh, vegetation thing. So, it's a win win situation for the guy. Just like that, look at it. Look at that. Beautiful bird. Beautiful bird. Mm. The 
alligator is looking for trouble. That's what he's doing. He's looking to get hit by by the trolling motor. The egret. There he goes. Well, I think when they called it a uh, gator pit, what they really meant it was an alligator pit, not to be confused with multiple gators. Uh, I've been out here for about three hours, and this up here is the sixth alligator that I see. I'm gonna call him Steve. Now, Mr. Steve over there um, is a prime example of why this particular habitat isn't all that favorable to alligators because he is a fairly large creature that uh, requires navigation and as a fairly big creature he requires open water so that he could swim if you see him zig and zag it's not because he's trying to zig and zag away from me it's because it's virtually impossible for him to swim in a place like this and I think that's kind of the reason why I haven't seen this many alligators alligators are all about conservation of uh, energy and uh, if they have to perpetually meander between to and from um, they really oh there he goes it's it's very difficult for them in a place like this you'd be surprised uh, they don't like to get stuck uh, sure you know when people think about alligators you know they typically envision swampy sort of habitat and that's true assuming they don't have to you know move much like let's say if an alligator had a really big feast and then just needs to kind of keep it on the down low then yes but for an average young alligator that is not so successful in the hunt uh, as a growing teenager you know they professionally need to hunt fish and move about and chase the herd so to speak and they don't like your ass like this and I've been looking on my fish finder and other than just a little tiny tiny fish I haven't really seen anything worth mention and that's only because like here's a good example I just had to turn because it's about to get shallow again but uh, grasses like this are really really good for small fish which is why when I look down I see you know like little baby mollies and whatever else baby anything else big and eh, not so much so bigger fish will tend to be closer towards the bottom away from all the weeds and uh, alligators are more or less a surface type predator um, it doesn't preclude them from you know being able to dive and everything that that that's really not uh you know like there's places around the world where crocodiles you know scuba dive well dive for the scuba divers you know at 80 90 feet deep uh, so going deep really isn't that big of a problem for them it's just the fact that they prefer the path of least resistance 